So this has been a long time coming. This is my Momentum by Eli and uh, Luke over at Out of Darts. And this is actually from the pre-order batch. I pre-ordered it a long time ago. And you know, this year, life, everything has been so crazy. It's just been sitting there on the wall, taunting me. It's gently traveled in the passenger seat uh, 500 miles twice now. And it was time to get it in front of the camera. But this is the Momentum. It is their kind of all-in-one tournament-ready flywheel blaster and it's designed to do it all and it's semi on the fly programmable what do i mean by that well you can control the fps or the speed you can control the rate of fire how many darts per second it's firing in both its burst and full auto modes and you can control the number of cycles it has in the burst mode if you're doing anything but three dart burst like are you even tactical bro but it was finally time to get it out and get it in front of the camera charge it up and put it through its paces and let you guys know what i think of it i've had it for months now let's go I spent some time with it and given everything that it does, it's about as small as small gets, which for a tournament setting, you wanna present the smallest target coming out of cover. I would almost argue that if I was using this in a tournament, I would remove the stock entirely. I think the stock is great if you plan on using it in low FPS for like HVZ or if you just have a casual kind of super stock game and you wanna use it at any of those other speeds. But obviously, if you're pushing the envelope and this is your full auto or burst fire blaster on your 5v5 team, I think that you want it tournament idling, max FPS, pretty high rate of fire, although I don't know if the 26 DPS is actually valuable. I see a lot of people put their rate of fire way too high in tournament settings and then having burst is pointless because all the darts go more or less in the same place. Regardless, personal opinions aside, something nice about the momentum is that your personal opinion matters. This dial is both a forward and backward as well as a selector button. You can push it into change settings, move it forward and backwards. If you've gone to the trouble of purchasing one of these given how expensive it is, I assume that you can read, which means you can follow the very simple instructions to change all of the settings in the blaster, but it's as simple as dialing into the menu and then moving some settings around. You'll see the colors will start shifting through. So that is low FPS, but obviously if we want it to be higher, we just dial it up like so. And now it's gonna be loud. Sheesh, that cooldown takes a while. So obviously you can tell that there is a distinct difference there. The main controls that you're gonna be using in any sort of battle are here. This is the thing that you would change on the fly more often. This is the kind of thing that you would fiddle with in your pit between matches with your teammates, kind of deciding how you wanna run your momentum. Over here you have semi, burst, and boogaloo, right? Pretty solid switch location. I'm a little like curious as to why we have semi is semi, burst needed to be shortened, so it's just BRST, and I wish there was something down here on the grip portion of the plastic that said full or boogaloo. I have a really cool spikes lower that says like parlay, plunder, and then yarg. It's a platform that you can have a lot of fun with, especially when you're designing the blaster from the ground up. As far as its actual performance goes, there's really not anything to complain about. I mean, you've compacted the blaster completely. You've increased the price to account for the custom flywheels, which are machined, not printed. All of the different things that go into the controller and a display output here. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a computer that fires half-length darts. This is something that Eli's been doing very well since back when he was messing with rapid strikes. And it's something that the community really hasn't had in a hobbyist package, in a printed form factor, in a while now. And this is by far superior to its predecessors in its overall performance and kind of like very aggressive tactical package. It looks a lot more like a from the ground up, this was designed as a tournament blaster, as opposed to something that started as like an office toy 3D printing thing that quickly became a tournament blaster. Overall, the momentum is just a really solid platform, but that's enough of me talking about it. Let's put a couple of darts down in a burst, and then we'll take it outside and show you what it's got. There, ah, it's clearly in the 200 FPS mark right now, but let's, uh, let's take the old channel fireball here and... Uh... I mean, they're standard half-length darts. That's just a lot of power in the burst. Even in semi, right? I mean, you're gonna get... Pretty serious slap. Of course, it is Talon compatible. This is one of Luke's, what does he call these ones? These are the Tachi mags. It'll take regular Talons as well. And depending on what your team's dart loadout is, the player using this is definitely going to need multiple magazines just to take full advantage of it. But that's the beauty of team balance. Let's take it outside. Let's put it over the chronograph. Let's show you how it slaps. All right, guys, so we're out here with the momentum. Foldable stock, but I think we want access 
to those controls. Haven't put an optic on it yet, and I actually kind of like the built-in hand grip here. I think that it's uh, it's pretty solid. After idling for a while, it gets a little warm here, but not the end of the world, especially if you're playing during more uh, temperate climates. I've got it in semi right now, because I think that that's the best way to test some FPS readings here, and I have it set to the highest FPS possible. So hopefully we're getting close, but not over that 200 FPS. We get some worker gen threes followed by some max darts. So let's put those over. A lot of wobble in the magwell there. I wonder if it does it with regular talons. Let's see. Not as bad, but partially just because there's a lot of weight hanging off of this magazine. Let's uh, put a few over. So you guys can see there, it's, uh, it's actually working its way up from 200 and ending at 223, you definitely want to set it down a little bit for the competitive market so that you never went over in crony. Now, you know, that's interesting. We've got really, really good sportsmanship in the hobby where the competitive scene is at right now. However, it is interesting to, to query as to if this has a lockout mode, if you could crony it at check-in and then lock it out for the rest of the day or something along that line. I'm sure the brilliance of Eli, he could program something like that in, but I don't believe it's been done as of right now. Let's just full auto sum over the chronograph in this form, switch it to boogaloo mode and see what happens, and then we'll fire some kind of at the shoulder. Yeah, in full auto mode, it's definitely hopping. So let's go to burst. We have one talon left here. Let's burst fire up here, see if we can connect with our favorite lantern roughly 30 feet away. Shouldered, lined up, and... Took a second to dial in, and of note, if you feather the trigger, you get a single, a single shot like that. Let's just put one burst down range, full power, shouldered shot, and one dart decapitated, but the other ones blew through the fence line. The fence is about 60 feet away, so, you know, pretty safe to say that those level shots would have been going 80, 90, no questions asked. But, hey, there's one, one dart left. All right, how mad do we want to make the neighbors? Eh, not too mad. <laughs> Got a lot of slap. It is also very loud. Apologies to my headphone viewers out there. But that is the momentum. If you have 650 burning a hole in your pocket, too bad. This is part of the pre-order. I think they did 20 units. I don't know how many are out in the wild because I've had this one for a few months now. But, you know, huge shout out to Luke doing it in my colors. Looks good. Everything looks better in vertigo gray, baby. Especially since he's all protopasta now. It was very kind of him to use my, uh, my special filament. Overall, a very handsome blaster high performance, high technology, a serious tournament contender, eliminating the need to cannibalize blasters from ye olden times, I think pretty succinctly. But that's just my take on it. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the price, what happens with the production. As we head into 2024, I'm sure that the project is going to continue and there will be more yet to come, but uh, we won't know until we know. So keep an eye on outofdarts.com. I'll link down in the description box below, but I paid full Monty for this blaster. Luke has sent me a lot of things over the years, so there's definitely you know some nepotism at play, but during the pre-order period, I sent the entire cash value of this blaster because I really wanted to test Eli's latest creation. And uh, you know, I'm not disappointed at all. I think that if you're a serious competitive player, this is a serious piece of sporting equipment for your 5v5 team and an excellent option to have in your composite. You want somebody with a reliable flywheel blaster that can deliver the hits. That's just my take. If you've done battle against or with one of these, leave me a comment down in the comment section below. I'm very curious what other, I guess, you know, not beta, but first wave users think of the momentum because so far I'm quite satisfied. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, much love, blast on, track out.